Jeff Shera, this is an email from Felix in Brewster, Massachusetts. Did you notice that Jeff praised both Generals Corm uh, Cromwell and Sherman, who were noted for their attacks on civilians, farms, food stocks, and other non-combatant entities? By the end of World War II, these acts were proper, properly called war crimes. Question, what is it about Sherman and Cromwell that Shera finds so worthy of praise? Well, Cromwell, I don't think we talked about it. I think he meant Cornwallis. Cornwallis, yeah. Uh, well, I would disagree with that take. And, uh, and uh, first of all, Sherman has a reputation that's been embellished in the South, particularly in Georgia, particularly, um, as being savage, as being brutal. I'm sorry, that's not accurate. Um, there, are, there are brutalities, most definitely. Civilian plantations burned, yes, most definitely. Were things ransacked? Definitely. Sherman didn't authorize any of that. Um, and I can get deeply into that I mean, uh, because I'd rather deal with the greater issue. Sherman, I mentioned this earlier, Sherman and Grant share something. They won the war because they understand. You asked me the question before about a gentleman combat. You know, what, what was gentlemanly war? What Sherman understood is, and there's a letter, and I, I don't have access to it in front of me, but there's a letter that Sherman burns a town in Mississippi during the siege of Vicksburg. The townspeople are begging him, please don't burn our town. You know, well, we don't have any soldiers here. This isn't a military target. And Sherman says, if you, if all you know of the war is the occasional box that comes home with one of your sons and you wail and you cry and you have a funeral and the kid goes in the ground and that's the end of it. You forget about it the next day. If you don't have a contact with the war, you have no reason to make it stop. I'm going to hurt you. And he does. And that principle is, okay, everyone has to hurt. If it's just the soldiers, um, World War One, you know, look at, look at World War One is fought on the Western Front in this no man's land that stretches from, you know, Belgium to the Swiss border. That's where the war is. There's no bombing of cities. There's no what, what happened in World War Two. There's no B-17s. There's none of that. The war goes on for four years, you know, because the civilians are not hurting. War, and I'm sorry, this is a brutal reality, war affects everyone, not just the kid with the rifle in his hand. And if the civilians back home are not aware of what that kid is going through and they're not feeling that pain, the war will just keep on going. Um, that was an, a, an awakening we had in this country in the late 1960s in Vietnam. You know, because we have TV cameras. There, here's what's happening, and it's in your living room every night with Walter Cronkite. Look what happened. People reacted with outrage. If it's quiet and, you know, once in a while you read a newspaper story, it just keeps right on going. So, uh, you know, first of all, uh, you, I disagree with the statement that after World War II, all of this was recognized as war crime. The Allies bombed, the British and Americans particularly bombed German cities, bomb them to oblivion. We firebomb, you know, the outrage over Japan is Hiroshima. You know, we use the atomic bomb. We had already firebombed Tokyo and destroyed 15 square miles of Tokyo and killed a quarter of a million people. You know, where's the outrage for that? It's war. And Sherman understood this in the Civil War particularly better than anyone fighting it. It's one reason I admire the man and why I say he ended the war. How much longer would it have gone on had Lee been allowed to believe, you know, escape Grant at, at, at uh, in, um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, Petersburg. Petersburg. Uh, yeah. um, how long, you know, how long could it have gone on? Sherman understood, you want to end the war, you end the war. And I admire him for that. And it's not a war crime. I'm sorry. Chef Sarah is currently reading the Missiles of October 